Hi, this is Ray from Whitney Automotive, and I'm sitting in the 2006 Mazda 3 that we picked up as a trash to treasure project about two weeks ago. Uh, in the first video you probably saw on my drive home is I complained about a helicopter noise and some vibrations and noises as we were getting going. Most of those are related to the engine mounts, which I see are badly broken. Uh, we're going to start with engine mounts. I paid $69.88 it is for a set of all three engine mounts. Uh, it's a four-piece set, but three mounts and then a bracket with a bushing in it. Um, so add that to the list. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to split up this episode into three separate episodes or three separate sections so that you can find information easier. The first one we're going to do is the right side engine mount. So today on Ray's driveway, we're doing engine mounts. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to do one mount at a time. Uh, the first mount, most common mount to go bad on these engines was the right side one. Uh, it is right here. Uh, it goes right above the drive belt, drive belt tensioner. So there's a view, at it, view of it from the underside so you can see just how bad it is. All along here it's completely separated. So this is one that we've already removed from the car and as you can see this is what it looks like when it's installed on the vehicle and it kind of sets down on itself. but. What I'm feeling for is underneath here. If we turn it over, you can see that it's cracked. Now when it's settled on itself because the engine is weighing it down, it can be difficult to see. But from the underside, you can see that it's completely cracked. So that's the crack we're feeling for when we reach underneath the mount. In order to get the engine mount out of the car, I'm only going to use four tools. A half inch impact gun, a 17 millimeter half inch drive, uh, impact socket, small extension, and then a floor jack. So we need to support the engine from the bottom so that when we take out this engine mount, the engine doesn't set, fall in or sag the other engine mounts really bad. In order to do that, we're going to roll the floor jack underneath the AC compressor. We're going to hit towards the back side of the compressor. Now, in order to get to the AC compressor, the engine under undercover that's on the bottom of it needs to be removed so we don't crack it or damage it. Um, if you've never done that before or you haven't done that, you can go ahead and take a look at one of my other videos about removing a Mazda 3 splash shield and that'll show you how to get it off. There's really only about seven bolts that need to come off if they're all still there. So I'll put a link to that on the uh, corner of this site, corner of this video, uh, if you have not seen that before. But let's slide underneath and take a look at how I have the jack on it to make sure that we support our engine. All we're going to do is jack up our engine slightly, and you'll see. And now we're okay. Now, with the engine supported, we're going to remove our coolant reservoir in order to get better access to the mount. Uh, if you look at the coolant reservoir itself, we don't have to take any hoses or anything off. Um, there's a small push retainer here and a small push retainer there. And in order to get it off, just have to pull up on it. Now this is the, these are the parts that can get kind of tricky is the order in which we're doing things. So pay close attention to that. Now with the coolant reservoir out of the way, I'm gonna loosen these two 17 millimeter nuts right here first. Now it's pretty important that you do these first and then the mount ones later. I'll tell you why in a second. But you definitely want to loosen these two first. I'm going to use an impact wrench in order to do it and make this job simple. If you don't have one, you can do it by hand. You can see the engine shift as the second nut comes off. Now we're just going to use our impact wrench to remove this 17 millimeter bolt and this 17 millimeter bolt on the inside of the fender. And now our mount is free to come out of the car. Now the mount out of the car, you can see just how badly broken it is. It's in two pieces. This has probably been broken for a really long time. This is our new mount. You can see how stiff it is right here. There's no break here. It's brand new. These are the other engine mounts that we'll be doing in the next couple videos. Um, you can also get this center insert for the mount separately. Generally, all you have to do if you buy it and it doesn't come with this bracket is slip it into place and bend one of these tabs over either in a vise 
or with a pair of pliers. Now before I slip them out into place, I'm just going to use some rust kind of trend. I like BG products. This is BG Enforce uh, to lubricate the holes and the studs so that our bolts are put on nice and smooth and won't seize easily should we ever have to remove it again. And we're just going to slide our mount down into place. adjust our engine up some so I'm just going to take my jack down here and crank up the engine a little bit that other engine mount was really sagging lowly and it looks like it's in place now we're going to get the body side mount started And then we'll start the nuts on the engine side. As you saw, you can grab the engine and manipulate it as needed. Try to get the bolt holes in the center of the mount. Now that we have them all finger started, okay, you want to make sure there's a gap between the mount and the engine side. What we're going to do is we're going to tighten down the body side bolts first. Those are the most likely and easiest to strip out. raise our engine again slightly to try to get this gap compensated for by moving our jack stand or our, our engine jack now we can tighten down these two nuts as well now when you do the final part you want to make sure these tight these these nuts are snug or at least bottomed out and then before we go wrenching on them, we're going to remove the tension from the bottom of the engine so we're not driving it down onto our oil pan. Now we can go back in. Make sure they're all tight. Okay, the final step to installing the engine mount would be to reinstall the two tabs on there. We're take our hand and push down firmly, and we're reinstalled. Engine mount is in, and we're good to go. So that's it for the right side engine mount. As you can see, that was pretty simple to do. Just make sure you do things in order, or you could wind up stripping out some bolts or not getting that mount seated properly. Uh, the next mount we'll be doing is the uh, passenger side mount, which is definitely broken on this car, but isn't easy to see that it's broken. So you may want to watch that one to figure out how to check if yours is broken and see how to replace it if it is. Again, thanks for watching. This is Ray's Driveway.